How's it going and welcome back to Zelda Secrets. The series where I'll cover five obscure hidden details, easter eggs, glitches, or whatever else from the Legend of Zelda series. In every iteration, Hyrule has had an incredible amount of depth, hiding secrets and references that even avid Zelda fans might miss. So subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content, and let's look at some more Zelda secrets and references. Breath of the Wild takes place in an age tens of thousands of years ahead of any other game in the timeline, so far in the future that the events of the previous games, regardless of which timeline they were in, have all been consigned to the Era of Myth, a time so long ago that the truth of the events are lost. Even 10,100 years before the events of the game, the Sheikah were still in their prime as a technologically advanced race serving the goddess Hylia, and Ganon had lost seemingly all connection to the man he once was. However, despite this isolation in the far future, Breath of the Wild still features a massive amount of connections and references to other games in the series. An interesting one is found in Hateno Village, the humble farming community in the southeast of Hyrule. The Kochi Dai Shop provides Link with a unique service. If he brings various materials of a certain colour, he can dye his clothing. The shop is run by the eccentric Sage, a strange looking man with a rat-like face, large forehead and red hair, who carries various vials of dye, both in his hands and strapped to his stomach. Sage is one of the stranger characters in the game, clearly passionate about his work creating dyes from materials. But not only is he strange, he's actually a reference to another strange lover of chemistry, Doc Bandom from the Wind Waker's Windfall Island. Bandom runs the Chew Jelly Shop on the island, and creates medicines and potions from Chew Jelly. Sage's appearance is clearly based on Bandom's, the large head, sunken eyes and single prominent buck tooth, and both specialise in creating various coloured liquids from materials. Elsewhere in the post-apocalyptic wilderness of Hyrule, on the Great Plateau, Link meets the Old Man, a mysterious, hooded individual who lives in his small hut to the south. The Old Man acts as a guide to Link, explaining the state of the world and how to survive in the wilderness. Towards the end of the plateau, there are hints to the truth behind the Old Man. He vanishes into thin air, surrounded by spectral green-blue flames, eerily teleporting to the Temple of Time. When he begins to tell the story of the fall of Hyrule, he reveals his secret. He's a spirit, the spirit of the King of Hyrule, who died a century ago during the collapse of his kingdom during the Great Calamity. However, for those who've played older games in the series, this revelation was actually hinted at much earlier. The old man carries with him a lantern, attached by a metal ring to his walking stick. This isn't only a useful tool for a survivalist living alone in the wild, it's a reference to the lanterns carried by almost every iteration of the Poe in the series, phantoms often shrouded in a cloak. The Poe lantern is even an obtainable item in Twilight Princess HD, incredibly similar to that carried by the spirit of the king. Ikana Valley is one of the most haunting locations in the series, the decaying remains of a once prosperous kingdom ravaged by an ancient war. The valley is home to my favourite of the game's dungeons, the Stone Tower Temple, but before Link steps foot in the inverting stronghold, he must pass through the Akana Castle, and face the kingdom's long-dead king. The ruins of the castle are infested with the undead, and the Hero of Time must use the Mirror Shield to bring light to the darkness of the fortress. However, completely out of place in such a dark location, a single paper plane can be found on top of one of the pillars surrounding the castle. It's never explained, it's just a weird little easter egg, but it's one of my favourite details in the game. In the scorching sands of the Gerudo Desert, Link can visit the Starlight Memories Store, a jeweller's specialising in earrings and circlets, all using various gemstones, harnessing their innate connection to the elements. A sapphire circlet, for example, uses the blue stone to harness the power of ice, and make hot climates more bearable, or a ruby circlet harnesses fire to do the same for cold climates. The diamond circlet, fitting for the clear nature of the stone, harnesses the power of light, 
and protects against damage from ancient enemies, like Guardian Lasers, a form of hyper-focused light. However, this circlet has another connection to light, a tiny reference to a being which appears often as a winged ball of light, a fairy which can be found in most games in the series, often in pots or fairy fountains, and famously is the spiritual companions of the Kikiri tribe in Ocarina of Time. Fairies appear in Breath of the Wild's Hyrule, so they would be known to the various races of the world. So perhaps the Gerudo shape the diamond circlet to show the image of a being they don't quite understand, a being which appears to be made of pure light, a fairy. Moving away from Breath of the Wild, back millennia in time to Ocarina of Time, there's a neat reference added to the 3D version of the game. The Happy Mask Salesman, while most famous for his appearance in Majora's Mask, also appeared in its predecessor, as the smiling owner of the mask shop, where Link can rent out various masks for use in side quests. In the original, this mask shop is pretty bare. The Mask Salesman's character had yet to be expanded upon in the sequel, However, by the time of Ocarina of Time's 3D remaster, the character was established as the unhinged, mysterious character he appears as in Termina. And as a reference to this, we can see not only his backpack, hidden in the back of his shop, but also every single mask which appears on his pack, displayed on stands on either side of the store, including a Mario mask, an Elvis looking mask, a mask based on the screaming face from the mirror shields, and many more. After playing Majora's Mask, Ocarina of Time's version of the Salesman always feels quite bland, so this is a great nod to the role he plays in the sequel. I know that this series is meant to be five obscure Zelda secrets, but let's throw in a bonus round. Breath of the Wild has an interesting, obscure detail in Luralin Village, the tiny seaside town in the south. Found here in one of the huts is All or Nothing, a version of the treasure chest game which has been a Zelda staple since A Link to the Past, which in turn is a reference to the very first Zelda game's money-making game, a game of chance involving selecting one of three options in the hope of making rupees. My personal favourite iteration of this staple minigame is Ocarina of Time, where Link can just use the lens of truth and cheat the whole thing. All or Nothing is pretty standard, but there's a minor detail I find interesting involving the game's owner, Cloyne, who lounges on the floor. Beside him, Cloyne has two bottles, which if we look closely have the Gerudo emblem on the label, actually the very same bottles drank by the women at the Noble Canteen, the bar in Gerudo Town. Like most bars and pubs in Zelda, like the Milk Bar in Termina, the Noble Canteen doesn't explicitly serve alcohol, though it's pretty clearly implied. Link's not old enough to drink there, Gerudo women drink to unwind, and even pass out complaining about men. However, the bottles drank by Cloyne are explicitly referred to as alcohol, known internally as Village Fishing Liquor Bottle. The game internally also hides a little reference to Majora's Mask, Phantom Hourglass, and A Link Between Worlds milk bars, as all NPCs found at the Noble Canteen Bar in Gerudo Town are referred to as NPC Oasis Milk. Most characters involved with the Gerudo and the Desert are known as Oasis, but are then differentiated by their location or class, like Oasis Student for the Students, Oasis Goddess for the Vine of the Goddess statue, and so on. But the fact that those at the bar are known as Oasis Milk makes me think that this is either an internal nod to the milk bars of previous Zeldas, or that the Noble Canteen was once intended to be a milk bar. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like or subscribe if you haven't already for more Zelda content. And if you play or have ever played RuneScape, I'm actually running a similar series to this one covering obscure trivia in that game over on another channel. This explorer wears a green pointed hat, identical to that worn by Link, the reincarnating hero of the Zelda series. Not only this, but his examine info. Link in the card or in the description. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.